Well, Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 5, verses 10 through 14, it says, If we love money, we will never have enough. If we love stuff, material possessions, we will never have enough. There will always be something more that we're striving for, pursuing, wanting to get a hold of. So we talked about that as we go through the search on the sermon series in the book of Ecclesiastes. So I just want to take a few more minutes to talk about this idea of managing our income and managing our finances. The Bible is pretty clear that there needs to be uh, disciplines in our life that guard us from chasing after income and wealth and possessions. So what is that for you? What guardrails do you have in place within your life to prevent you from going all in after after something? We all view money a little bit differently. I, I remember when our girls were little, three daughters, and if I gave them each a dollar, one of them would spend that dollar on herself, all of it. One of them would save it, take that dollar and just hold on to it and save it. And the other would spend that dollar, all of it, on someone else. Three very different views of, of money. And so, you know, some of us view money as control. Some of us view it as security. Uh, I know a number of people who maybe grew up in homes where there wasn't food. And so when they put food in their shelves or the refrigerator after grocery shopping, uh, a full cupboard of food, it indicates security that everything's going to be okay. We're going to have food for the next couple of weeks. So there's security there. Some of us view it as status, money as status, or maybe as enjoyment or entertainment. Everybody views money a little bit differently, but God teaches us some basic principles when it comes to stewarding our finances. Ecclesiastes 5, if you love money, you will never have enough. Let me just share a few things with you over the years that have been helpful to my wife and I in terms of, of finances. Uh, the first is we've we would have early on in marriage, we set up an amount of money. I believe when we first got married, we were poor college students who got married in college. And it was like $50 that neither her nor I, and this is before cell phones and texting, but we would not spend it until we spoke to the other person. It was just a matter of respect. It wasn't permission. But if we both went out and spent $50 on the same day without communicating with each other, there was a good chance we were going to go in the hole. We are going to go into in, uh, our account was going to be withdrawn uh, or overdrawn. And so $50 was that. Now, as our marriage has, you know, as we've grown and our income has grown over those years since very early on, that amount of money has changed. But to have an amount out of respect, I've sat with couples where one of the spouses would buy a car without speaking to the other spouse, right? Big no-no. Big no, no surprises in, in marriage. I remember this early on in marriage too, we, we did the budget, we broke everything down. And I remember thinking, we don't spend that much money eating out. And then we defined reality and we actually kept track of it. And it turned out we did. And so we, we cut down on that. Know where your money's going. So let me ask you, do you know where your money's going? Have you done the number crunching? Have you kept the receipts for a, for a month? If you haven't, maybe you did it years ago. Let me encourage you to take some time to do that. Another principle, uh, your needs are priority over your wants. I, I know that sounds really, really basic. Your needs of lodging, clothing, and food are more important than Netflix, cable, and the baseball game. If you don't have money for rent, you can't go to Disney. Basic 101, right? And I know you know this, and uh, it, sometimes it's good for us all to just be reminded to say no to some things that would be really nice to have because we, we need money for food, lodging, and clothing. And uh, some principles my wife and I have also learned is to, to give first. Giving first teaches us generosity. 
to be generous first, right out of the gate, every dollar we get, to give a portion of that back to God. Giving first teaches generosity. Saving second builds wealth, but it also prepares us for when the car breaks down, prepares us for when we go a season without income, prepares us for uh, you know, our daughter's wedding, for example. It prepares us for things that are unexpected or really, really big ticket items. And then living on the rest, it teaches us contentment. Whatever we have left teaches us contentment. That means to have the discipline to say no to some things. Um, let me challenge you this week. Say no to some things you normally would say yes to. It's a good discipline. Say no to some comforts in order maybe to say yes to something else that God may be asking you to, to give to. Maybe a friend's going on a mission trip and you want to give to that. In order to do that, you deny yourself something else. Uh, give first, save second, live on the rest. Uh, it's what we're all about at Boulder Mountain. Why do we give first? Because God not only gave first, he gave his all to you and I. Uh, let me pray. Father, continue to teach us to be wise with our money, to love you and recognize and use money as a tool to steward what you've given us here on earth. Thank you for everything that you have given to us. We recognize it as a gift from you. We love you. Thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen.